Hi all, let's look at another very exciting game from the World Cup. This is in round 6.4, Levinaronian having to win this rapid game. Uh, so this is at 25 minutes plus 10 second increments. He had lost the previous rapid game and had to try and win this to stay in the World Cup. Let's see what happened. So Levinaronian playing white, d4, we have knight f6, c4, g6. And now this is an anti grunfeld move designed against d5. Now black plays c5 and we have potentially uh, a Bononi formation but at the moment without e6 and ed it's king's Indian territory. Simish, king's Indian. So bishop g7, knight g2, black castles, knight g3, a6, a4 to stop any b5 from black, h5 with the idea of h4. This is actually prevented with bishop g5 as well as pinning that knight. Queen c7 unpinning the knight and preparing to kick that bishop to maybe continue with h4. Queen d2 setting up a battery to exchanging off the dark square bishops to weaken black's king. e takes, c takes, safer than e takes with the king lying on e1 here. Knight h7, so the bishop is attacked. Bishop h6, which does let go of h4. Black makes use of that. White takes on g7, king takes. And now knight g e2 has been seen before. Uh, for example, there's been games with knight d7, knight c1. This position has been seen before. And it's about equal. But yeah, there's a bit of a shocking move played in this position. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, bishop c4. It's almost like a, I guess, a kind of fishing pole to activate the rook. The basis of a fishing pole tactic is is basically to activate a rook. And here, black does take, and there's an immediate threat now with this rook activation of queen h6 check. So black parries that with rook h8. And uh, now, very, very powerful attacking move again from white. Can you guess? Okay, e5 does a couple of things. It gives e4 for the knight, and also potentially this bishop across the diagonal could usefully pin this pawn or attack this pawn in some variations. We have queen e7. Alternatives here if d takes d6, this is really dangerous for black after knight e4. Well, losing basically. White is threatening knight f6 check. And if takes queen takes h8, mate. If here then g4, and here g5 again with knight f6. So that's why, yeah, e5 is extremely dangerous uh, in this position. So uh, we have queen e7, and white just castles queen side. So again, very interesting position tactically. Here, knight d7 was played. If uh, queen takes e5, then rook d e1. This position, check, and is mating. Yeah, so that's that's pretty pretty bad. Uh, here, if uh, queen d4, check, and rook h4 protects the bishop, and that's winning. The queen's got nowhere. Uh, to run usefully, well, uh, there's going to be rook f4 coming up. It's it's crushing basically. Uh, so, yeah, this this is not good to uh, to take there. And uh, here, there's d6, and this position knight d5 is a very powerful move. Yeah, taking away a key escape square, uh, for example, like this, is just horrible for black. Uh, so yeah, it's a very very difficult position. Uh, so this is why knight d7 perhaps was played in light of stuff like that. E takes d6. Now you can see that this diagonal is potentially sensitive as well. Now knight e4, the queen wants to go onto this diagonal, and the black queen stops that with queen e5. 
we have d6 opening up the bishop. G5 trying to prevent, uh, well, potentially the nudging of the queen in some lines. Uh, we have rook h e1, b5. Yeah, this is a bit of a desperate scenario for black. Uh, the queen can be nudged potentially. Say, say rook b8 was played, f4 trying to nudge the queen off this diagonal. Then we have check, and this is crushing this this kind of sacrifice because if the rook comes to the seventh then there's rook f7 it's absolute devastation uh i believe actually we can take on h8 check here there's no queen yet and then take the queen uh so yeah this this is all pretty crushing here on that uh so in this position yeah b5 but we have bishop d5 f4 trying to nudge the queen away from the diagonal uh here if queen f5 check d7 is pretty devastating with the idea that knight d6 some forcing moves here nasty pin on f6 but you can see again the rook crashing to the seventh rank is pretty devastating for black yeah this kind of variation is absolutely devastating uh so basically we have queen d4 the queen sticking around for a moment but queen e2 hits the queen and also protecting the bishop of course the queen hasn't got any of these squares to keep on the diagonal here um but the white queen has another ambition now and actually this is the final move of the game can you see what white plays which causes black to resign if i give you five seconds starting from now Okay, Queen H5, yeah, threatening Queen takes F7 and, and then Rook H1. So the game ended here. If Rook F8, for example, well, Black resign here. If Rook F8, Rook H1, and it's just going to be mating like that, for example. Yeah, there's not much to do here. Knight uh, E5, we just take that back to the same threats. Doesn't really do anything for Black. Uh, yeah, just to show the main threat, just token move here, check, and then rook h1 would be terminating. So basically, yeah, queen, queen h5, and there's real, there's no, there's no real defense here. So black resigned. So this game, very important game to keep Levon Aronian in uh, in the World Cup this year, 2017. Hope you got something from this very exciting game, actually. In my view, comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.